Okay, everybody, I've gotten a lot of emails about how to make the decisions for the Bonferroni correction. And so as a last um, effort to help you guys understand what to do here, I've made you this little movie. So I want to start by reminding everybody that a type 1 error represents the probability that we're going to reject a null hypothesis by mistake. So it's saying that we found an effect when we didn't. So each statistical test that we run has its own type 1 error rate, and this is usually set to 5%. And you should know by now that this 5% is represented by our p-value. This is why we're looking for a p-value to be equal to or less than 0 0.05. So the p-value represents that the error rate for this conclusion that we wish to draw is at about 5%. So as long as this value is 0 0.05 or less, we're going to conclude that we have a significant effect. But we do keep in mind that it's possible that we're going to make this type 1 error. Post hoc comparisons, in this case Bonferroni, are needed if we have a significant F statistic on a one-way analysis of variance because that F statistic just tells us that one mean in our comparisons is significantly different from the other one. But it doesn't tell us which ones are significantly different. So we have to run all of these individual pairwise comparisons. And post hoc procedures control this type 1 error rate across the multiple comparisons so that across all of the comparisons that we need to make, we're risking a type 1 error rate of 5% across all of them, not within just each one. So that's why we're using Bonferroni. Now looking at the data, once you have the data, you need to go to Analyze to compare means to the one-way analysis of variance, bring your dose variable over to the factor, okay, and your change variable to the dependent variable. You want to ask for Bonferroni comparisons in the post hoc box, okay, and then ask for descriptive statistics in the options box. And then once you do that, hit OK, and this is the output that you should get. So here's your descriptives that tells you in your placebo group your mean is 34, your standard deviation is 14.30 looks like once you round, and you have 10 people in that group. Likewise, 0.1 micrograms, you're dealing with 10 people in your group, you have a mean of 50.80 and a standard deviation of 18 point looks like also uh, 4, 0, or 3, 9, okay? So this is the information. These means and standard deviations are what go into your in-text results section when you're talking about which mean is significantly different from the other mean. And they also go in your table of means. And these are the values here, the mean values that you're going to put into your bar graph. So we've already gone over a lot of this, but actually we've gone over all of it. But I wanted to make sure that in one place you had all the information that you need. Okay, so this is the information that you need to discuss whether or not the uh, analysis of variance is significantly different from zero. And if you have a problem with this, go back earlier in the video where we're discussing the p-values. Now the biggest question that I've gotten is how do we get the observed t-value to put into the results section? So the first thing is that this uh, chart here represents all possible mean comparisons. So against the placebo group, this is the mean difference between placebo and 0.1 micrograms. So this is your mean difference and this is your standard error. All t-tests are a mean difference divided by a standard error. So this output doesn't actually give you a t-observed value. You have to compute it. So you first you look here in your significance columns for the ones that are significantly different from zero. And again, go back to the beginning of the video if you don't know how to figure that out. And then the ones that are significantly different than zero in order to get the t-observed value that you need, you take this mean difference, in this case it would be negative 16.80, and you divide by its standard error, which is 6.93. And then that, the result of that division will give you your t-observed value. 
So in this case, if I was reporting placebo against the 0.1 micrograms, I've got 10 people in each group, so my degrees of freedom would be the total number of people in the uh, analysis minus 2, so I'd be looking at 18 degrees of freedom. And then the T observed value that would come after that would be whatever negative 16.80 divided by uh, 6.93 is. Okay, and then this would be the p-value that I associate with that. But again, you're going to have to decide for yourselves whether or not that's significantly different from zero. Okay, so hopefully this helps. If it doesn't, you're going to need to come and see me. All right, see ya.